Good one for our club has been Todd Frazier. Stocks have stumbled. Todd Frazier has not. He's hitting the ball out of sight. It's been a glorious trip for him. Closing in on 40 home runs. He's got 39 of them. Closing in on 100 runs batted in. He's got 96 of those. And he tormented Kansas City, Philadelphia, and here the Cleveland Indians. This was a bomb he hit last night. So Todd Frazier continues to get very close to the numbers he wants to put up. And there you see what he's done on this road trip. 419 with three home runs, six driven in, an OPS of 1247. So things going very well for him. Hopefully today he can hit his 40th, and it would be a magical trip. Well, the pitching matchup today on the mound for us will be a, a very talented southpaw, and for them, a gutsy right-hander. Josh Tomlin really has come alive the last month of the season because for a while it didn't look like he was going to get it done. Now he is. And Carlos Rodon going to the mound for our guys. He's had a pretty tough go in September. Last time out against Kansas City was not a good outing for him. However, he seems to save his best for a progressive field in the Cleveland Indians. He would certainly like to finish with a flourish as Josh Tomlin, who is not overwhelming, but does have about the best control in the league. The fewest amount of walks for nine innings in the American League belongs to the man you're looking at, Josh Tomlin. So we'll take a look at the last couple of starts for Carlos Rodon, not very good. This month, overall, in a couple of starts and three appearances, Tomlin 1 0, but his ERA at 142. And Carlos loves to pitch here in Cleveland. In four starts, he's 2 0 with an ERA of 169. As the Sox try to delay the parade for the Cleveland Indians, their magic number is two, and we'll see if the Sox can derail them here this afternoon. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, is Miller time. By Honda, great deals are waiting for you now at your local Honda dealer. And by Xfinity, Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Ford, America's best-selling brand, six years running, inviting you to check out our fuel-efficient lineup at your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. And by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Test drive their all-star lineup today. Visit buyhyundai.com. progressive field. The baseball world awoke this morning to hear of the tragic death of Jose Fernandez. It was a boating accident and whether you knew him or whether you just read about him or whether you competed against him it's a tragic loss for baseball. 24 year old was killed with two other people late at night and unfortunately 
One of the great pitchers, one of the great lights of our game is no longer with us. And Robin Ventura, before the game, had some comment on this tragic occurrence. You know, it, it's, it's sad. I mean, you got guys that, uh, that know him. Um, I, I don't personally know him, but I mean, you, you enjoy watching and, um, you know, seeing what he brings to the game. And it, it's just, it, it's a sad day. It really is. You don't really have to know them personally, but they, you know they're within your group, and um, you know it, it, it breaks everybody up. It really does. We send our prayers and condolences to Jose Fernandez's family and the family of the two other people who died with him in that accident. Baseball has lost one of their best. X1 will change the way you experience TV. And welcome back to Progressive Field. It's absolutely a gorgeous afternoon. As Robin playing his final road game of the season. And on the other side of the equation, Terry Francona and his Indians playing their final game in the regular season here in Cleveland. They go on the road, they'll play the last seven. A big four game series with Detroit coming up after the Indians leave here. They've taken the field. There you look at Josh Tomlin who has as good a control, probably better control than anybody in the game. So let's take a look at how Robin is going to line them up this afternoon. Tim Anderson leading off. Adam Eaton still out of the lineup, likely to return for tomorrow's game, but Melky Cabrera in his absence in the two spot. That's Jose Abreu playing first base and hitting third with the DH, Justin Morneau. Todd Frazier at third. Abasiel Garcia, who's starting to swing the bat pretty well with Omar Nervais behind the plate. Carlos Sanchez, who had a big night last night, and Liuri Garcia playing center field and hitting ninth. The defense, and now Terry Francona is going to line him up behind Josh Tomlin. You'll notice that Francisco Lindor having a day off as he's really grinding to a halt. He's over his last 25. So Coco Crisp in left, Rajay Davis in center, and Brandon Geyer, who had a good night last night in right field. Then it's one of their MVPs, Jose Ramirez at third. Michael Martinez gets the nod at shortstop with Jason Kipnis and Carlos Santana in the infield. Chris Jimenez is behind the plate. And Josh Tomlin on the hill. Last time we saw him in Chicago, he threw the ball very well. He's 12 and 8 this year, but he started out red hot. He was 9 and 1, at one point. His ERA 461. You can see opponent's batting average at, four seven, at 274. And he's not overwhelming, but he'll move the ball in and out, up and down. And it's got pretty good control of it and a curveball and change up to go with it. The umpires for this afternoon's game, Bill Miller, the crew chief behind the plate, Tony Randazzo's at first, Ryan Knight at second, and Jim Wolf is at third. So the Indians have thrown the ball around the infield. They come into this ball game with a seven game lead over Detroit, and we're ready to play baseball, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much. And 
Once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as there is first pitch strike to Tim Anderson. And Steve told you some of the best control, if not the best control in all of baseball. So that should be a little clue right there to our hitters. When you're talking about a guy with that kind of control, as a rule, he pitches 0 1. Yeah, you've got to attack him because he's exactly. going to try to get ahead with the fastball. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you got to have a you know a clue on what's going on. Is that a little ground ball right side, backhanded? Nice feet. Watch out! Oh boy, that was close to being very, very dangerous right there on the ankle. Santana didn't make a particularly good play because what a pitcher is looking for as he moves to first base is a good solid throw. He's not looking for a blooper because it takes a while for the ball to get to him and then he's got to locate the bag. He wasn't able to do that. And we'll see if Anderson gets a base hit. He will indeed. A good way to start it. Well, Tomlin on the soft flip just misses the bag by plenty. That's where you got to get on the ball as quick as possible. And the last thing the Indians would have needed to have another starting pitcher go down. Tomlin goes down. They're going to have to have a bullpen by committee in in the playoffs, which yes. is something that would be disastrous for them. Well, believe me, I I speak from experience. So get them the ball as quick as you can. Remember a pitcher named Steve Hargan? I do. Well, I was playing first base, ground ball very similar to that right there. I went over there and bobbled it, gave him a little bit of a thing, and he snapped a knife. Cool. Just exactly like Tomlin came close to doing yeah. right there. Well, it could have happened a couple different things. You could have had your foot over the base and some guy tear up your Achilles tendon, which has happened a few times in this game. Oh, sure it has. Yeah, that was. The A terrible feeling because it was certainly my fault. Well, Jimenez is behind the plate and he doesn't throw anywhere near as good as Roberto Perez. So the running game is available if they want to use it. Perez, for the most part, can shut down a running game. That's so Jimenez. Melky, four for eight with a homer and four RBIs in this series, hitting at 298, 13 homers and 80 driven in. But he's had a tough time with Tomlin. 19 at bats, just two hits. Decent lead by Tim. And that should be a can of corn if the sun's not going to be a factor. So Rajay Davis gets an angle, makes a catch. And with one out, let's check out our picks to click. Todd Frazier is the fans. Pick to click. Tim Anderson is the crew. Steve went with Melky. And a dear friend of all of ours, Roy Rivas. Roy Rivas and I, Roy has been there at, with the White Sox for a long, long time, longer than I have. Roy's been there 60 years, hasn't he? <laughs> He's <laughs> the head chef there and guy who's fed us all these years, Roy and I. We're going to go with Avi. And we all love Roy Reeves. Well, you don't find too many bigger fans than no. Roy Reeves. He lives and dies Let with every what. game. And I mean, when he gets hot. <laughs> I know. He, he can get upset. He gets hot. Well, the thing is, he always says to me, How come we can't do this? How come we can't do that? And of course, my standard answer is it's Hawk's fault. So when he comes, you, you talk to him about that. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah. There are probably some White Sox fans as big as he is about his loved, beloved White Sox, but none loves him more. Outfield straight up, spread out, spaced about equidistant. Tomlin has a good move to first base, and he usually holds runners pretty well. Tomlin's given up 35 home runs this year in 160 innings. When you're around the plate as much as he is, you're going to give up a lot of home runs. <laughs> a 
Yeah, you show me a guy that's 12 and 8, and giving up 35 home runs. I'll show you a pretty good pitcher. Well, what happened with him is he got the cutter, and then like it's happened to so many pitchers, he got cutter crazy. He wanted to throw it all the time. First thing you know, the velocity and the fastball is down. Then you hang that cutter, just like you can hang any other pitch, and it goes a long way. So he's going back to the fastball more now because he locates it better. And he can and will throw it inside. Well, there are not many Mariano Rivera's around. <laughs> no. In fact, none. Abreu, three for nine with an RBI in the series. A little bigger lead now by Tim. Well, you've always talked about the importance of a pitcher throwing inside. Tomlin this year. All the opponents are hitting 176 against Tomlin on fastballs inside. That is third among 143 major league starters. So he will throw inside. League average is 270. It's almost 100 points less when he goes inside and establishes that. D. Is look at this. Get down. It won't. Had a chance for a moment, but Geyer comes on. Two out. The funny thing about it, now you will have some guys who don't agree with this, but they're in the minority. The vast majority, the softer your fastball is, the more you've got to pitch inside. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, if you're going to pitch away, let's say, let's say you're throwing 88, which is a below Soft. average, a below average major right. league fastball. You're throwing 88. You know, to a right-hand pitcher, right-hand hitter, you're going to throw sliders away, and you're going to throw curveballs away. You throw fastballs away, you got a hitter looking in the same spot with all of your pitches. That eventually is going to do you in. Well, he's going to hit you hard. <laughs> I remember Johnny Padres and I having a discussion. Johnny, former Dodger, great southpaw. Had later on in his career, went to Detroit. I faced him when he was in Detroit. He had a terrific changeup. So that means Hawkeroo was 0 for 4. Yes, here's Morneau. Morneau, five for 16 with a couple of homers off Tomlin. And we had a discussion one night over a few beers, and he was a big believer that if you didn't throw hard, you couldn't pitch inside. And I said, Pots, I love you, buddy. You're a great pitcher. You know more about it than most guys. But the softer you throw, the more you got to pitch inside if you want to get guys out. Well, that's like the philosophy of Fenway Park. You got the green monster sitting there. It looks like it's over your right shoulder. And yet, if you don't pitch inside because you're afraid of that wall, you're going to get killed. Well, we had some offense there that was comparable to any today there is in baseball. And the only guys that beat us were guys who pitched inside. Yeah, we had some thunder in that lineup, and you pitch from the middle out, and you were going to get killed. Oh, what a shame! What a shame! A tragic accident this morning with Jose Fernandez. Well, the Indians, to a man, can relate to it because they lost oh, yeah. two pitchers in a boating accident. Tim Cruz was one, Steve Olin the other. That ball in the center field. He's having trouble with the sign. Now he makes the adjustment. And that'll retire the side. After happening to play our guys, nothing. And their guys coming to bat.
this afternoon, it's Davis, Kipnis, and Ramirez. The top three with Napoli, Santana, who's been hot, Geyer and Chris to go with Jimenez and Martinez as we round it out. The defense, and now Robin's going to line them up behind Carlos Rodon. Melky, Leary, and Abastail in the outfield with Todd Frazier, Tim Anderson, Carlos Sanchez, and Jose Abreu in the infield. Omar Nervaez gets a nod behind the plate. And Carlos Rodon. Three under 500 this year. He was three over last year, trying to stay over 500 for his career. Very young career, and there you look at the numbers. So here's old nemesis, Rajay Davis, hitting in 255, 12 homers, 47 knocked in. And he is six for 12 lifetime off Carlos. Tied. So he is retired. He of the 41 stolen bases. Davis's. Good way to start it off, keeping their speed burner off base. Indians have swiped 130 this year. They've been caught just 29 times. And here's Kipnis. Takes first pitch strike. He is six for 23 lifetime against Carlos. Indians come in hitting at 264 as a club with a 3.81. That's pretty spiffy right there in the American League. 3.81 team ERA. Avi is playing awfully shallow in right field. Kipnis has got some pop. He's hit 23 home runs. Oh, yeah. He's. He's good. There's slider and the count one and two. There you look at the defense. There is a gap in right center field. Here you go. Two now. We'll take another look as he threads the needle on the inside corner. It appeared to be right there. Bill Miller rings him up. If this is not particularly enamored with that call, but it was certainly too close to take. Here's the biggest surprise of the year. Ramirez has taken over at third base. The irony is his best position is second, but they've got Jason Kipnis there, so by necessity, Ramirez plays third. This little guy has had some kind of season. Nice ending right there. One, two, three, and after one, no score.
Club blog at WGNTV.com, sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 38 years. To join the nation, visit JeffVuk.com because Nationwide is on your side. So here's Frazier. Tied. Unlike our team, has been having himself quite a road trip. In this series, first two games, he's four for eight with a tremendous home run last night. He's got that batting average at two and a quarter, which doesn't sound like much, but he came from a long way back to get it there. This one went a mile. Armstrong threw it. The first home run he's given up as a major leaguer. So for Todd leading off the sixth inning. Well, he'll remember that one in a couple of ways. That's poked into center field. One out. Here's Avi. Took the mask right off Jimenez. There's the first ball fastball over the plate. And solid contact. Solid contact for the mask of Jimenez. Avi. Two for eight in the series with a homer and three RBIs. One thing about Tom was we mentioned at the top, he's gutsy. And even though he's not a hard thrower, he loves his fastball. Well, Mickey Callaway told him, look, he's ultra competitive, which is a, a wonderful trait for any professional athlete to have. But sometimes you have to make some sort of concession to a hitter. And he said he believes in every situation he can get that guy out, but there are certain instances where pitching around somebody or just nipping just off the corner, that's a better plan than going right at people. Two hopper. Oh, two out. Who wins the MVP in the American League for you this year? That is yet to be determined. You think it's still up for grabs? I do. Sure. Yeah, I think I tell you, I, I think Big Poppy's got a big leg up, but still to be determined. Mookie Betts is right there. His sure. numbers are hey, spectacular. They got, how about Pedroia? They got they, they got three guys that yeah. are candidates on that ball club. And Xander Bogarts. I mean, it's it's a wonderful you're, lineup. You're right. I forgot about him. They, yeah, they've got four guys yeah. that are candidates. Narvaez takes first pitch strike. I'm just looking at 37 home runs and 124 driven in, tied with Encarnacion for Big Poppy at the age of 40. Well, you know he's going to have a lot of sentimental folks as well. That ball hit hard. Geyer is there, so that is six up. The last six is retired.
no score. Napoli, Santana, and Geyer. Napoli, 244, 34 homers and 100 knocked in. Picked up those 99th and 100 in game one. Well, the reasons why Cleveland picked up Napoli outside of the obvious, he gives him right handed power, is his postseason experience. He was in the postseason in 07, 08, 09, 2011, 12, 13, and 15. Well, there are no negatives about Mike Napoli. <laughs> and the way he, you know, he's a young, he's a young 34. He's played a lot of games this year. So there is the dreaded leadoff wall. Kellogg's a big problem. One of the things he's got to address because this number is not going to lead to a lot of success. His first pitch strike percentage. He is literally last of 144 qualified starting pitchers in all the baseball at 53.4 percent first pitch strike. So he's behind most of the time. Well, it just goes to show you how talented he is. Oops. And there is one of the great announcers in all the sports, not just baseball, Tom Hamilton. Boy, he loves his Indians, and he is very, very enthusiastic about it, and we'll let you know it. Fighting that sign, Leary makes the play. The irony of Tom is he was brought in to broadcast with a beloved Cleveland Indians figure, Herb Score, who was just, I mean, idolized in this city for his pitching prowess and then as a broadcaster. And as soon as they paired him with Tom, Herb was gracious enough to integrate him into the fandom that is the Cleveland Indians. He got instant credibility working with Herb. Well, he's in his 27th year with yeah, him now. It's, he had a wonderful career. Yeah. Herb score was a terrific guy. I faced her. Herb had pretty much like Sam McDowell's stuff before Sam was even a thought. Ted Williams said Herb score had the best stuff he ever yeah. saw. Ted told me that the closest he ever came to facing death <laughs> was Herb score through a fastball at his head. And he to, he said to this day, Hawk, I have no idea how I got out of the way. When I faced her, that was after his arm injury. And it was not the line drive. Yes. He gone. Guy is retired. Two down, but most people think it was that line drive off the bat of Gil McDougal that ended his career. And Herb said that is not the case at all. What happened was the next spring. He went to spring training and he was trying to show everybody that that was gone. It was passed and he tried to snap off a curveball too quick too early in the spring. And he hurt his elbow. But when I faced him he still threw hard with tremendous movement but he didn't have that. He didn't have a secondary pitch. Well he didn't have that triple digit fastball yeah. anymore. I would think Bill Miller's strike zone is going to be pretty generous today. As it should be. Yep. If you're calling for both sides, you make them swing the bat, get away day for both teams, it means a lot to the Indians. That'll retire the side as Coco gets into the force play.
Next, it's time for the Subway third inning triple play promotion. Text Subway 3 to 97999 right now, and the 300th texter will win a $30 gift card to Subway restaurants in the Chicagoland area. Subway, fresh is what we do. Here's Carlos Sanchez. Fouls that one away. Sanchez, three hits last night. Three for seven in the series with an RBI. That was a good curveball by Tomlin. That's going foul. And that's going to kick foul. The injury to Brett Laurie, it gave Tyler Saladino a chance to play a whole lot of games he wouldn't have otherwise played. But the back problem has derailed him and Carlos Sanchez getting an opportunity to play a bit more. So the injury to Laurie opened the door for a few guys to show what they can do. Make no mistake about it. We miss Brett Laurie. Oh, indeed. I mean, That energy that he has is infectious, contagious, and positive. And it helped that he hit more than his share of home runs and doubles. No. When you miss, when you get those two guys going down, Austin Jackson and Brett Laurie, you're going to pay the price. Some of the range of Brett showed the second base was, <laughs> was pretty good. Well, he had 22 doubles in 94 games, 12 home runs, 36 driven in. Plus, he could steal a base. Well, yeah, physically, physically, he's he's a good player. There's no question about that. And with us. Just starting to swing the bat extremely well. But his value to a team is just hard to put a number on. Wow. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Get hit in the knee. Well, it's not it's not easy to follow a ball off your knee. We'll take another look. Hermes coming out. To have a word with Leary. I don't know what it is. I really don't. These guys are fouling pitches off their body that in all my years of playing the game, I never saw guys foul pitches there off. Never. I think in many instances, like that pitch, that looked like a cutter. I think guys are throwing cutters more, and if they throw it inside to the lefties. They're going to follow it off a part of their anatomy, but you never saw guys fouled off the upper part of the leg or the no. knee. No, it was, it was the instep, it was the top of the foot, maybe the shin on occasion. That one guy fouled one off his cup. <laughs> yeah, we never saw a lot of those foul balls. It's, it's just. I would say probably you're right. I would say it probably it's it's the cutter. And diving. Diving out over the plate. Up until Charlie Lau came aboard, so to speak, as a, the hitting coach. 
You didn't see many guys diving. There's a chopper two hopper. Two down. And here's a man who's got the only hit in this ball game. And it, of course, was not what you call a ringing base hit. Oh, good execution, and it's a double no hit. Rajay Davis with that make up speed chases it down. And that is the last nine retired by Tom. An official White Sox debit card only available to your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash White Sox to learn more. Wintrust Community Bank member FDIC. Kansas City put a quick four spot on the Tigers. Yeah, Indians doing a little scoreboard watching. And Boy. Move to the top of the second. Kansas City win and an Indians win. And that's it. Game over. Certainly they would love to do that because after this game, we board our charter and go home for the last week of the season. And after this game, they board their charter. And they go to Detroit for four and Kansas City for three. Ball line and Melky saves. That's a nice play. The ball was sinking hard on him. Join us for the last regular season home game as the White Sox face the Twins on Sunday, October 2nd at 210. It's Fan Appreciation Day, and hundreds of prizes will be given away throughout the game. For tickets, visit WhiteSox.com. Here's Michael Martinez, switch hitter, one of four again in this lineup for the try. Two down. Martinez can literally play anywhere, and Terry Francona does that. They used 24 players yesterday, which was an all time Cleveland Indians record for a nine inning game. They had used 23 back, I believe, in 1951 and also 1920 or 21, but never 24. Well, he's doing something right, obviously. 11 consecutive years of being five, over 500, and he's going to do that again for the 12th. And the thing is, is that, you know, you would think that maybe some other managers might take a look at that. But you got to have the versatility of those yeah. two guys. So you can carry one less. 
and put that one less in the bullpen. Add one more to the pen. So, you know, imitation is the form of flattery. And it should not be something. There's too many guys that don't want to get out of the box. Francona has never been one of those guys that was afraid. And look at Joe Madden. He's the poster child for that. He's as, he's as out of the box as you could get. Well, what he's doing is they're going to, people are going to look at that. And I'll guarantee you, down the road, you're going to see more and more people, more and more managers doing what Joe Madden does. It's just like looking at Kansas City for GMs. That should be a model. You start building with that bullpen. Yeah, if you can, well, if you can find the arms and the durability, you can make it a relatively simple game to manage if you have the lead after six. Well, that's the whole thing. You're trying to, the, you got to have a goal. And that goal should be for all GMs is to put a team together that your manager can manage a five or a six inning game. Because the more, the longer you, the game goes, the more you got to manage. You better develop those guys because getting more costly to try to trade for them. Well, you're not going to trade for them. Yes. Strikes him out. So, one, two, three. And more no. Top of the fourth inning already. This game is moving right along. Those guys getting it and throwing it. There's first pitch strike. Melky went out to center field his first at bat. Now getting back to the thing, nobody's going to trade you anything out of their bullpen. That's that's become a no unless that you're just going to overwhelm them. Unless you were going to trade a Chris Sale or Quintana, one of those guys to get some bullpen help. That's the only way you're going to get it by trading. Well, Brian Cashman did reload his organization, getting rid of Chapman and Miller. Some really good young prospects back. But Miller, he's serviceable. He's going to be here another two years if they want him at a, at a a reasonable price. Well, that's one of three ways that you can reload your organization. First way, obviously, is with your scouts. If they do their job, then they're good. Next reason, or the way, is that you gotta you gotta lose for a few years <laughs> to get high draft picks. Yes, fighting the sun, Davis, one out. And of course, the the third way is. By trading some of your stars away 
to get young prospects. Those are the only three ways you can build. Here's a Bayou. First pitch strike, what new? Well, he's 114 strikeouts, 20 walks. No, it's really, it's just amazing control. That's a good piece of hitting, but it's right at him. Two down. So fewest walks per nine innings in the American League. Rick Porcello, who's 22 and four, is 1.2 walks per nine innings. Tomlin leads the league 1.1 walk per nine innings, which is remarkable. Then it's Tanaka, Shoemaker, and Chris Sale at 1.8 walks per nine innings. Morneau went out deep to center field. That's 12 in a row retired by Tom. Masahiro Tanaka is going to miss his scheduled start at Toronto. He has a forearm problem, and this year he's been brilliant. 14 and 4. The injury report is brought to you by Dr. Anthony Romeo Orthopedics. If you have any shoulder or elbow problems, go to RomeoOrthopedics.com or call 312 432 2342. Kipnis, Ramirez, and Napoli. We haven't seen Kipnis do a whole lot of bunting, but occasionally against tough left-handers, he will do that. So it's something that Todd Frazier has to keep in mind. Takes first pitch strike. Kipnis called out on a fastball that he did not think was a strike. And the count quickly, nothing in two. But you know, getting back to Tomlin and the way he's Getting our guys out. Little gift infield single by Anderson to lead off the ball game, and that's been it. Only hit in this game, period. But he's retired the last 12. He's gone 155 innings this year. He's only hit three guys, and all three of them have been right handed hitters. So, what does that tell our left handed hitters? Well, he's He's going to pitch away because that is 
That's his strong side. That's exactly right. He's going to pitch away because he's not going to hit you with that slider down and in or that curveball down and in. So maybe back off the play a little bit and then you can really look out there and go get it. The appeal to Jim Wolf, he said no, and he didn't come close to swinging, so the count goes full. Yes, he did on that one. He gone. That ball was way off the plate. Jason Kipnis, who would have drawn a walk, can't check his swing. And for the second time, he's down on strikes. That gives him 140 strikeouts this year. He didn't have too many at bats like that. That's one of the lesser at bats we've seen him <laughs> yeah. have against anybody. First pitch strike to Ramirez, who granted out to Frazier. Final home game for the tribe of the regular season. They really hate to see it end as far as the home schedule is concerned. They've been brilliant. 53 and 27 at home. Far and away the best in the American League. Well, they played 500 on the road. 37-37. It's really your formula. Kill them at home, play 500 on the road, and you usually are going to win your division. Yeah, but that <laughs> what they did against the Tigers was 13 and 2 so far. That's unbelievable. That really is. Second wall. Issue. White Sox fans celebrate your culture with Hispanic Heritage Night on September 30th, presented by Miller Lite. It's going to be Latin music and dancing, special activities for kids, and an on field parade, as well as a post game fireworks show. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Miller Lite, official beer of the Chicago White Sox. Tickets start as low as $10. To purchase, visit whitesox.com slash NHH. So here's Napoli. He drew the first walk issued by Rodon. And yanks that one foul. Well, there's a few fans that say, look, Napoli either hits a home run or strikes out. Well, he does a whole lot of that. But Napoli's response to that is, I'm not going up there trying to hit a single. I get a chance, I'm going to air it out. It's worked out pretty well for him this year. And he's going to force the Indians to make a tough decision because he's going to be a free agent. I don't think they're going to let him go. He fits right in with Terry Francona's theme, so to speak. In the clubhouse and on the field. Milky very deep in left field and over toward the line. Yeah, you're good managers. They they're gonna have if there's a player who's a good player, but it's bad in that clubhouse, they're not gonna they're not gonna stand for that. They're gonna be gone. Now he's not one of those guys, and the question is is he gonna ask for three years at his age? He does like price himself out of the Indians budget. Yes, he did. He gone. Two down. That was his put away slider at 88 miles an hour and the appeal to Tony Randazzo who said he did go around. Looked like he went around a little too far. Yeah, he did. That particular pitch is going to hold Carlos Rodon in good stead over the course of his career because at 88 down and into a right hander they just they can't make contact. Here's Santana. Good lead. By Ramirez. Ramirez 22 stolen bases. We mentioned he's hitting 317, 11 homers, 75 driven in with those 22 stolen bases, 45 doubles, and three triples.
There you know, good fake. I believe the 45 doubles is the most for a Cleveland Indian switch hitter in their history. So you take a guy who had 219 last year, you tack that 317 batting average onto him with all of those doubles, and you just shake your head because it's it's a remarkable year for Ramirez. And he's going to get the opportunity to show it again next year. Big Poppy with 47 doubles. Jose Ramirez, 45. Then it's Altuve and Betts. There's a strike. Two out, one and two, the count. Good balance in this ball club offensively. There he goes. And Anderson taking charge, makes the catch. And that'll be time to side. We'll go to the fifth, scoreless. Their bank now get access to over 45,000 fee free ATMs nationwide. If you're just joining us, Tim Anderson hit a little ground ball right side that Santana got the pickup, made a bad feed. Now there's a base hit. That's a solid base hit by Frazier. So that breaks a streak of 12 in a row retired by Tomlin. Only our second hit. Hey, Sox fans, you win with Papa John's Pizza all season long, which means for the next week. The day after the Sox win, you get 50% off your entire online order of regular menu priced items only at PapaJohns.com when you use promo code SOXWIN. That's at all participating Papa John's locations. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Here's Avi. Avi grounded out to Ramirez the third. Well, it was a nice move, but Todd Frazier was standing on the bag. That happens a lot to him, as you see. 50 pitches, which is not a whole lot, as he heads into the fifth inning. One of the things I think that 
Todd is not going to be able to do against Tomlin is get that running start. I hope not. No, Tomlin is <laughs> Tomlin is one of the best around at holding base runners, which is why they're catching Jimenez instead of Perez. Got that pitch way inside. Ate him up in the count of 0 and 2. Tom was one of those guys that's fun to watch pitch. He's got to move the ball in and out. You look at his stuff, if you're going to just evaluate his stuff, forget the uniform he's wearing, just put him in a t shirt, evaluate his stuff, and you'd say, well, nothing's overwhelming. And then you look at the control he has. And the fact that he does have a pretty good curveball, you say, well, you know, he's got a chance. When you average just a little over one walk for nine innings, you got a better chance. That's in the right field. And out number one. Not a lot of guys, a lot of people, I should say. People don't take into consideration when you're talking about a guy's control and he walks a lot. That's not telling you also about all the 2031 counts that he's had. That he didn't walk, that ball got hammered. <laughs> True. Narvaez lined out hard to Geyer in right field. That's lying in the left right at him. So he is 0 for 2 with two line drives. That's the advantage of throwing the first pitch somewhere near the zone, not making it particularly hittable, but making it either down on the outside corner because you get your share of one pitch outs. Be a lot of people. A lot of people. Glad that Omar Narvaez is on this ball club. He has really been impressive. Yeah, I think he's shown that they got to take a long, hard look in spring training next year, oh, depending on depending on you know the acquisitions and who yeah. they decide to bring in. That is a foregone conclusion right yep. there. Carlos went out to center field his first trip. There he gets that Lance Johnson jump. He got it, and <laughs> that's surprising. Tomlin didn't bother looking at him, and nobody alerted him to the fact that he was going. So he steals another bag. It's number 12 for him. <laughs> Pretty amazing. He's not looking at him, and he just takes off. Uh, I love it. He tried that against Tomlin in our ballpark and didn't work quite this well. Thirteen this year. As hard as Frazier plays, he still likes to have fun. Up there. That is one reason I like him so much. You get a guy without great speed, swiping thirteen bases, being caught just five times, and that is amazingly enough. The team lead in stolen bases. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Hit hard but foul. 
Geyer has a pretty good arm in right field, although not the typical right fielder's arm. Coco Crisp, not much of an arm in left, so anything hit that way, Doug Frazier is going to score, at least try. Rajay Davis gets the ball quickly, does not have a great arm. His arm is okay in center. Once again, the 2 2. And there's a base hit. They're going to wave him around. They're going to make him throw. And the throw is way off the mark. Good job by Joe McEwen. He was going to make him throw him out. Coco, they're going to run on him. They're going to they're going to run on him all day long. So the stolen base leads to a run. Our Mazda replay. Tomlin forgetting about Todd Frazier at first base. Turns into the first run of the ball game, and that's RBI number 16. And Coco. Not so much. So here's Leuri. He grounded out to second. Don't stop now, boys. It's sharply, but right to Santana. So the stolen base. Carlos Sanchez been coming up with some big base hits. One nothing. Geyer, Crisp, Jimenez. One nothing Sox. And you can cancel a post game show. Well, not surprising because Geyer has hit in the high 320s against left handers all year this year. One of the reasons why they picked him up. The Luke Croy deal fell through. And then they got Geyer from Tampa Bay. Takes him right back up the middle. First base hit. So here's Coco. Chris been into a 5 4 fielder's choice. It looks like a pass yeah, ball. It does. And that is a big break for the Indians as Omar Narvaez is charged with a pass ball. Yeah, he just whiffed ball. Yep. Now becomes a completely different at bat for Crisp. 
Corners in close. Coco trying to go to the right side. Guy are three for four in stolen bases. Runs in scoring position. So Crisp has been just outstanding this year. With the Indians, he's driven in six runs, all of them against our Sox. You're getting ready to say he drove in three in the first <laughs> game here. Yeah. And three in Chicago. Trying to shove it that way. He's going to get himself a new bat. Dollar bill just bit the dust. Indians well aware of the fact that Kansas City has extended their lead to seven to nothing, heading into the bottom of the third in Detroit. It's amazing the way the whole game of baseball and culture has changed. When you got little leaguers using bats that cost more than major league bats. And I mean a lot. Well, those are the composite bats. I mean, you, you get one pretty durable. They got little bats, three or four hundred. Hits it hard, but very foul. The appeal, and he said he, he didn't said swing. He did not go. I thought he did, but they said no. Lomar thought he went because he went ahead with the throw to first. Scoops that ball out of the dirt. That head got out there quite a bit. Meanwhile, two on. The question is now with Chris Jimenez. Who hit the ball very hard last time. Yeah, Martinez coming up next. Will Terry Francona decide to have his catcher lay one down? He's got three sacrifices this year, so he can bunt. Now Mike Sarbaugh, the third base coach, is talking with him. Well, he's an odds on favorite to bunt. Certainly would think so. Todd Frazier has given the signs to the infield on what he's going to do and then told Carlos Rodon which way he wants him to charge. It's on favor and then you might have Martinez. Eyes on favor but. There was one of the incarnations of that wheel play. Shortstop breaks the third second baseman in back of the runner but. Brendan Geyer not fooled by that one.
Sacrifice by four. Perfect bunt forced Todd Frazier to field it. And that's the fourth sacrifice of the year. Well executed by Jimenez. And you might see a squeeze right here from Martinez. Martinez grounded out to Sanchez his first trip. Robin, at least for the moment, is going to concede the run at the middle infield back. Frazier even with the bag at third, coming in with the pitch just in case. What to know the count to the 34 year old veteran, all purpose player, Michael Martinez. Martinez, a career 187 hitter. The second time they've had him this year. That has popped up. Bobby. Nobody's going anywhere, so that's out number two. I would have bet that he was going to squeeze. Nope, didn't that give him the sign? He only had one sacrifice this year. Well, maybe that's the reason he didn't give him a sign. Now Don Cooper coming out. And the discussion is going to go something along the lines. You got first base open. You got Rajay Davis, who's hit you pretty well. And you got Kipnis, who's coming up after him. Kipnis, a strikeout victim twice, is probably telling him, look, you want to allow Davis to get himself out, nip at the corners, don't give him anything too good to hit. If you walk him, you walk him. Take your chances, the lefty lefty advantage with the next hitter. So Bill Miller has gone out to break it up. The infield back to their positions. And Rajay Davis, who's had a really good career average wise and big hit wise against our Sox, stepping in. Davis has grounded to third and struck out, and there is the attempted by. Point foul. Good concept. He's a good butter. Yeah, the speed is speed is, as you know, excellent. I say Davis is a good player. Yeah. Two. That was a high slider he was able to throw by him. Against the Sox, Rajay, 298 lifetime hitter. He gone. And he pitches out of it.
Celtics Sox lead. It'll be the top of the order. Anderson, Cabrera, and Abreu to face 31 year old right hander out of White House, Texas, Josh Tomlin. First pitch strike to me with that more or less a gift infield single in the first then he lined out the center in the third. That one throws from the extreme first base side of the pitching rubber thinking he can get a little better angle on that slider he uses or a cutter. I hated right handers that stood on the first base side of the rubber. Where'd you think it gave him the advantage? It just you know, optics. Just looking at him. And that's out number one. Looked like every everything he was going to throw once he started his lineup was going to be right at your underneath your hands. Sox Fest 2017 returns January 27th through the 29th. Bringing ballpark fun to the Hilton Chicago. You can get autographs or a photo with current players, coaches, and White Sox greats. Your favorite areas will be back with an interactive space to play games, win prizes, and shop for team gear. It will be a weekend of White Sox baseball you won't want to miss. For more up to date information, visit WhiteSox.com slash SoxFest. Melky twice has gone out to Davis in center field. Conversely, those right handers that sit on the third base side of that rubber. To me, it looked like everything was going to be outside when they started their wind up. I was going to say, normally, if you stand there to a right hand hitter, most everything will be outside. Yeah. You're trying to get trying to get even a better angle, especially if you're throwing a curveball. So the Tigers losing seven to nothing. Victor Martinez has hit one out of the ballpark, a grand slam to narrow that to three runs. Tigers trying to fight their way back into it. One three and zero oh for us. Oh one and zero oh for them. If you're just tuning in, here in the top of the sixth. Toronto leading the Yankees 1 0. That's in the top of the sixth up at the Rogers Center. And that's on the track. Okay. Two down. And here's a Brayu. Twice he has gone out to right field once the line drive. Last 25, Jose has been on fire. Seven home runs, 24 driven in, and a 369 batting average. That is just foul. Yeah. He's hit the ball hard a couple of times, playing Pepper with Geyer in right field. You look around the ballpark. This is just another gorgeous day here in Cleveland. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. He's back at the fence and makes the catch. A beautiful timing catch right there by Brandon Geyer. And that'll retire the side. Wow, what a nice play.
You lead it one nothing. Kipnis. Chopper two hopper. So one pitch one out. Join us on October 2nd for the final family Sunday of the season presented by Coca Cola. Tickets are as low as $5 in the upper level and 15 in the lower level. There are special kit focused activities throughout the ballpark, plus parking available for only $10. Visit whitesocks.com slash Sundays to purchase your tickets today. Ramirez taking all the way. He's grounded to Frazier and he's walked. I think that wind blowing in from right field a little briskly is what kept Jose Abreu from hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Geyer did a nice job of going back. That little little help from the wind. That's in the short right field. Carlos went way back. And quickly two down. Nice play by Sanchez. Indian swing very early in the count. And a minimum of pitches, 72 of them with two outs here in the sixth inning. Napoli has walked and he has struck out. Carlos with six strikeouts. And the count evens at one. Watch out. They put it on him. So a nice one, two, three inning, and we will go to the seventh leading by one. Along with Robin by logging at the WGNTV.com and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner for the latest stats and information. Sox Game Zone is powered by Dodd Camera, family owned for 125 years, handling all your photographic needs. Dodd Camera, where the focus is on you. Top of the seventh, Morneau, Frazier, and Garcia. 1 3 and 0 for us, 0 1 and 0 for them. Morneau has gone out deep to center and he's grounded softly to second. He's got the catbird seat, 2 and 0. Out and around. 
in the ball game last night Terry Francona used eight pitchers but at the same time we are today as we're into the seventh inning we're probably in the fourth inning last night that was a three hour and twenty eight minute game as it was bullpen night. I don't ever remember in the major leagues playing in a bullpen night game. Well, you got 13 relievers. You can have a whole lot of those, and because of losing their second and third starter, Salazar and Carrasco, every fifth day is bullpen day for them. I'm telling you, it's. it's yeah, we had four man rotations. Sometimes, not on close I've played on because we never had that kind of pitching. In Baltimore, they'd have nine men pitching stats. Did one of the years I was there. Yeah. Pulls him off the back, so Martinez makes the throwing error. It's a whole different world when you don't have Francisco Lindor at shortstop. The throw is well off the bag, and no chance on the swipe as Morneau hustles down the line. That's what made the play for us. Lindor played in 153 games, and this is just his first full season in the major leagues. He is wearing down somewhat, so he's got the day off. Here's Ty. He's single, picked up a Stolen base had a Lance Johnson jump. Scored on the single by Carlos Sanchez. There's a look at their very talented young shortstop, 22 years old. Likes to play every day. In fact, the article in the paper today about him said that he was starting to feel strong again after feeling terribly tired for about a week and a half. Well, it's more. When you get a youngster like that, it's not the physicality of this, the mentality. I mean, well, Terry Francona said he goes, look, the only way to get used to it is to actually do it. Sure. And so this is his first year doing it, and sure. he, he wanted to give him some other rest, but they hadn't put the division away. Yeah, you, youngsters get tired mentally. Now older players get tired physically. One out. That is the first strikeout for Josh Tom. There's one of the unsung heroes of this team, Dan Otero. All he's done is go five and one with an ERA of 149 and 59 appearances, and they got him as a not really an afterthought, but as a guy that was out there. Anybody could have had him. Indians like what he did. And he's come up big time for them. There's Avi. Avi 0 for 2. He's gone to the third and he's going out to right. But the playing time today, the playing schedule today, is entirely different for players than it was in years past. In years past, you're liable to play, you're liable to play close to 30 games in spring training. There's no way guys are going to play close to 30 games in today's. Culture, and then you play 155, 180. I mean, 158 during the regular season. Chasing that pitch. He's asking himself why he swung at that. Because it was a cutter that probably at one point looked pretty good until it moved six inches off the outside corner. It's 
Just got a piece of it. We what? talked about earlier about touching on Bobby getting more at bats than one of all, which I would love to see after taking some, you know, a couple of weeks off, whatever. But for me, I would have him play all winter, choking up at least an inch, inch and a half on the bat. Every at bat. That will shorten up your swing. And the shorter the swing, the faster the swing. The shorter the bat, the faster the swing. You think he'd be able to make that adjustment? Sure. Yeah. So you can see right there, he's right down at the end of the bat. Well, the shorter the bat, the shorter the swing. Back through the middle, gets through, it will. That boy, Avi. We've been talking about it. He's been having some real good at bats. Tomlin went to another cutter, only this one is higher than he wanted. I was able to take it right back through the middle. Chance to add a little insurance here in the seventh inning. Yeah, players have to go through it to buy into it. And you don't want to go through it through the regular championship season big leagues. You want to do it in winter ball. And then all of a sudden, you play a couple of weeks, you're choking up an inch, inch and a half, and you center cut a couple, and you see just how far they're going. And all of a sudden, you start buying into it. I don't think it's not going to affect the distance at all. He's very well, strong. In some places, it's going to increase it. Because speed is power. The faster you can swing that bat, the more power you're going to generate. As I said, <laughs> look at the guy who had more home runs than anybody in the history of the game choked up almost two inches his whole career. And he has some monster mashes. <laughs> Owing to the count to Omar. Omar twice is lined out, once to right, once to left. Been two pitches, and they haven't been in the area. You can see them right there on the Xfinity pitch tracks. The Bills had this strike zone from first inning yeah. on. So have noticed that he was going to call a generous plate. The only difference is in today's game, they can't let you know. In our time zone, they would tell you, swing the bat. Especially on getaway days. Two ball, one out. One four and zero oh for us. O oh, one and one for them. Can't seem to coordinate what Tomlin wants to throw. I would say if Mustard is sitting in front of you, it's going to be tough to really see the strike zone. Trouble. So that'll load him up. See, I told you they all even out. Last time a line drive right at crisp. This time a little chopper. That nobody can get to in time. There's a Kansas City special. <laughs> it was one of the few infield hits Omar's going to wind up with. 
So here's Sanchez and the line drive base hit in the left field. The Joe McEwing. Just absolutely. Got Frazier running all the way. Now Morneau is going to be run for by Shuck. The fifth inning. In a nothing to nothing game. Carlos comes up, lines it to Coco Crisp on a bounce. And his throw is way off the mark. Our fourth drive of the game. Well, Joe is going to make him throw him out. That's in the short center field. He did not read it well, but he comes home with that speed. Now, here's the throw to the plate. And the ball gets away. So he's safe. It's a 2 nothing ball game. And Jimenez hurt himself, and he had him out at the plate. Oh, yeah. I mean, that throw was on the money, and Jimenez had it fly out of the glove. Davis has it all going for him. He doesn't have a great arm, but he's coming straight in. The throw is right there. And he decides a one hand tag is appropriate, only the ball knocked out of the glove. It looks like it was knocked out by the foot of J.B. Shuck. So that's, there'll be a, I was getting ready to say, there'll be an error on the catcher. But they're going to give him a sacrifice fly, an RBI. A huge break. There have been a couple this inning. The air by Martinez let it off. Little trickler off the end of the bat by Narvaez, and now he's out at the plate for the final out of the inning. And the ball jarred loose. And Cornell has made the call to the pen. So we catch some breaks, take advantage of it, and still with an opportunity to do more damage. So Tomlin, who really pitched well, he'll depart and we'll be back. Dan Otero who comes on spectacular year on for the 60th time five and one ERA 149 opponents hitting just 215. He had some pretty good years for Oakland in fact in 2014 8 and 2 with 228 ERA and 72 appearances and Cleveland really liked what he did and he was acquired by the Indians from Philadelphia for just cash considerations. They didn't give up much. 
when they got him last December. So two on, two out, and here's Liuri. Liuri is grounded to second, and he's grounded to first. Oh, big guy, they sit right here. Took that pitch nicely. Avi at third. Baez is second. Carlos Sanchez, both both RBIs. Won the last home game we played, then won the first game in Kansas City. The only game we won there with that home run. Hard to believe. Back to back game winning RBIs. MacGyver played as sparingly as Carlos did. Well every place that Carlos Sanchez has played he's been the youngest player. And he has done well. Every place he's played obviously with the exception of up here. In the big leagues but all the way through the minor leagues. Did not go. Just hadn't played enough up here. All right, we get one. Seventh inning stretch, we lead it. Two nothing. Board and the schedule. Some big games being played. Boston leading Tampa Bay two to one. Kansas City has extended their lead to nine to four over Detroit. Houston in a must-win situation, and Seattle in a must-win situation. Houston is winning. Seattle is not. The Mets in a must-win game, playing Philadelphia, leading three to nothing. That game in the fifth inning. You know, I was just looking at Sanchez numbers. If you played him, if he played the equivalent of close to a full year, he'd be on pace driving over 70 runs. Well, it's going to be a battle next year, not only for second base, but for that swingman position. I mean, Saladino showed he can play. Leury's got some skills. Carlos with some skills. So there's some. Good choices. Some talented players that have a chance to play this year that wouldn't normally normally have gotten the opportunity. It's 
Sox on top two nothing here in the bottom of the seventh for them. It will be Santana Geyer and Coco Crisp the scheduled hitters face our 23 year old Sal Paul Carlos Rodon. One hit that by Geyer leading off the fifth. Ellis has walked three, thrown very well, started off a one, two, three first inning, and he's kept it up since then. So here's Santana. He has gone out to center and he's popped up to Tim Anderson. And that's a high pop up, and that's going to be souvenir right side. Thumb threw the ball well. He went six and two thirds, gave up two runs, one of them burned, but five hits, didn't walk anybody, which is usually his style. And he only fanned one. And the count 0 and 2. Oh, wish it. Happy birthday to Adam Ricks. Birthday yesterday. One of our support staff that travels with us. But we got some terrific guys in that support staff. Mike Kuchersky, Louis Sierra. Wonderful people. Great, great attitude each and every day of the clubhouse. Off the leg, so that'd be a base hit. Carlos appears to be okay. Omar's going out there to talk with him to find out if he is okay. It's a hard shot right off what looked like the shin and bounds away. No chance for anybody on this one. It's the left shin and Carlos appears to be fine. Guy has struck out. And then that base hit right back through the middle. Takes first pitch strike. Got to be careful throwing inside the Geyer because he's known to lean into a few. Here's their Xfinity Speed replay, and it comes with the glove. Geyer. Jose hits one way back, 375 mark, and Brandon Geyer runs it down, collides with the wall. Speed replay is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. He gone. One out. Talk with at a meeting before the game. And he is still sore. That's where you should be. Yeah, it, that was that was a good shot. He said Thomas Bar was getting the wind knocked out of him. It happens to you a lot when you're a kid, not so much when you're an adult. Yeah, he hit. That ball very, very hard. And if you missed it, poof. That was Perez. And just as soon as the ball hit his glove, he hit the wall. Well, he knew he was going to hit the wall. And he decided to go ahead and make the play. Rather than not catch it, brace himself. Yeah. Coco has hit into a 5 4 fielder's choice and he has walked. Yeah, I was concerned about his shoulder. His shoulder he had. It looked like it could have been a separated shoulder. Yeah. Well, that was when he had surgery. On it. One and two the count.
Here you go. Good put away slider and Chris could not check it up. So he's a strikeout victim for the first time. That pitch is close to unhittable. Eight strikeouts now for Carlos. So Aguilar is coming out to hit for Jimenez. Jesus Aguilar. We saw him last night. He came on to pinch hit in the eighth inning and rounded one right back to Nate Jones. A lot of life on the fastball for Carlos today. It's probably going to be a wild pitch. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Good. I don't think Omar's arms are long enough. No. That one way off, especially when you're sitting on the inside part of the plate. Whistle, that one right on by him. Both fastballs 97 miles an hour. Pitch number 90 on the way. Aguilar, a big man, 6'3, 250. Another 97 mile an hour heater. Got him. And that'll retire the side. They do get a hit. They're second of the ball game, and it's still 2 nothing. Good guys.
Sun has been overwhelming. A two hitter through seven. It's a two to nothing game. The Indians haven't done a whole lot. They have made a couple of errors. Todd Frazier has done a nice job today extending his hitting streak and stealing a base to go with it. Great deals are waiting for you now at your Honda dealer. That is the Honda game summary. And here's Tim Anderson with an 0 1 count. Slowly hit. Tina's a nice play there. One out. Well, he knew that he had to come get it with everything he had and get rid of it quickly because Anderson can fly. And he got him by about a half step. Adam Moore comes in. He was teammates with Royals outfielder Alex Gordon at Nebraska. Of course, then Gordon was a third baseman. Here's Malky. Twice he's gone out to center, once to right. Kansas City leading the Tigers 9 5. Bottom of the fifth inning at Comerica Park. Yankees have tied up Toronto at one. That's in the bottom of the seventh up in Canada. That's foul. Boston leading Tampa Bay 2 1, bottom of the fifth in St. Pete. Mets now leading the Phillies 6 0, top of the sixth at City Field. That race for the National League wild card is a dandy. Oh, it's sharply. Well, it still amazes me how the Mets have been able to hang in. I, I have no idea. Pitching staff has dissolved. They keep pushing back the guys they do have. And Bartolo Colon is the founder of the Fountain of Youth at 43 years old. Losing David Wright, one of the premier players in the game. Matt Harvey, Jacob DeGrom. Syndergaard has been pushed back. I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing. As you look at the National League wild card, Mets and Giants tied, and the Cardinals half game back. They play tonight against the Cubs at Wrigley Field. John Lester looking for a 19th win. I'm talking about the Cubs. Cubs. Are the only team with a positive rating in defensive run saved at every position. It's been a remarkable year for them, just about every category you want to mention. And they've won 98 games. Yeah, it's got a piece up. The Xfinity Fundamentals deck, high above left field, the U.S. Cellular Field, is accessible from the 100, 300, and 500 levels. You can learn baseball from the White Sox Academy coaches and check out the latest Xfinity technology, including the X1 platform. Ball hit softly to Martinez. Otero. Has retired all four he has seen.
of the game is Carlos Rodon. Oh, he's been absolutely brilliant. Giving up just two singles. They haven't hit the ball hard at all. Band eight. We've seen three of them. Very impressive to this point. No runs on the two hits in seven innings. Wrap your hands around the official Italian beat for the Chicago White Sox at one of the 19 Bona locations. So Abraham Almonte will hit for Martinez, who was over two today. Trump is not going to let Carlos get in a whole lot of trouble as Nate Jones is throwing in the pen just in case. Almonte always says, Look, good. Yes, that's the last night he pitched it, doubled in the ninth inning. Close. Couldn't quite get up here. I'd have made that catch. That was that was that was coming here running out of steam. I'll tell you what, you're doing the easy part now. <laughs> Talk. Well, you don't want to you don't want to get in the way of one that really comes back here in a hurry. There's a strike. Now Monty didn't think so, but Bill Miller's had a consistent zone today big and Zach McAllister loosening in the pen we saw him in the opener in relief of Bauer who threw the ball very well in the opener now feel slightly to the right gap in left center and the 2 2 pitch. Has been flying around behind the plate today. He's had it working out for him. <laughs> His ball way wide of the plate. Go down with the stuff he's got is one of the tough guys yeah. to catch. Well, that pitch right there. That was a get me over. Usually those three two get me overs go a long way. He gone. Nine strikeouts now. Big strikeout as El Monte expands his zone. This ball is out. Not a strike. But it looked like a strike when it left Carlos's hand. Ties the season high. That was back on September 9th against the Royals. Rajay, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Century mark in pitches. A straight change and a good one. That's still a bit of a work in progress. Yeah, right that's now. that's going to be the one that really puts him over the top. When he gets supreme confidence in that, that he can throw at any count to either location. Well, if he gets that kind of confidence, I think you're right. He can play way over the top. Yeah, he's going to be not unbeatable, but close to it. Yeah, he'll be one of the, he'll be in that niche of he can determine his own feet. Fate. A lot of pitchers can't do that, even when they've got. They're decent stuff and decent control. They can't can do it. But you get to put a guy in that category, a Chris Sale, in town, they can control their own fate. 
Verlander for the first what, seven or eight years, seven years he was in, he could control his own thing. Well, he's had a bounce back here this year. Oh, yeah, he looks really good. He go. Ten strikeouts. Join us for the White Sox Bags Tournament on October 1st at U.S. Cellular Field. Grab a partner, come out to our tournament, and see if you can win the tournament and take home a cash prize. For more information, visit whitesox.com slash bags. Well, that's an indication why right? Rajay Davis who just wears us out. 0 for 4 today with three strikeouts. Plus, he is now 2 for 16 lifetime all Carlos. He's going to pitch out of the strike zone, but Carlos's stuff is usually so good that he can get hitters out in the strike zone. There's not a lot of pitchers that can do that. 0 oh and 2. Kipnis 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts and a grounder to second. Top three hitters Davis, Kipnis, Ramirez have yet to have the ball out of the infield. That's pretty amazing is we're two outs deep into the eighth inning. Eleven strikeouts as he punches out the side and we're into the ninth. Premium, and you can see every out-of-market game live on HD on more than 400 supported devices. Enjoy a free subscription to AdPad Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv. Eric Gonzalez takes over at shortstop, and we got a new pitcher, Zach McAllister, our throwing right-hander. He's off the 52nd time. And he's got a two run deficit as Carlos Rodon. I'm not sure he's thrown any better than this all year long. No, two yeah. hitter with 11 strikeouts through eight. Well, stuff wise, yeah, this okay. is as good as stuff as he's had all year. Yep. Against a team that's really grinding to try to put it away, the Cleveland Indians. So here is Chuck. And the pinch run for more. No. And involved in one of the biggest plays. Seemingly thrown out at the plate only to knock the glove out of Chris Jimenez's, knock the ball out of his glove and score a run. 24,118 had 32,088 last night. They're averaging 19,594 on the season. Very disappointing attendance record for a first place ball club and a fun club to watch.
Chuck hitting at 210. Four homers, 14 RBIs. What a game today. As Don Cooper tells him, see, that's what I told you. You throw it up there, you get a big plate by the umpire, and then your stuff is so good that nobody hits it. And maybe you give up two hits through eight. It's not that tough. Well, <laughs> I'm glad to get that on tape. <laughs> This is the final game at home for the Indians before the playoffs. They want it up. Well, he got it up. But I agree with you, Hawk. In fact, this is an entertaining team to watch. Oh, they're fun. Most of this year, they've had terrific pitching. They've lost a couple of starters, but they can run, they can hit the ball out of the ballpark. And oh. they've got some really talented young players. Back on August 18th, we were here. That's foul back. And I think you remember me saying it just because. You think, well, if they hadn't have dissolved pitching staff wise, yeah, they would have a, a much better shot. And even then, Kluber can beat anybody. He's going to throw the first game. Yeah, I wrote down August 18th, Cleveland all the way this year. They were not my pick preseason pick. The circumstances. Baseball is a day to day game. Always. That's what makes makes it so exciting and so interesting. It's a day to day game always has been and always will be. People have a right to make predictions and as injuries or whatever come up change them. That's really what happened with Kansas City. I'm not going to tell you that they were going to win it I this year them. but they were in they were in great shape. On one play, they lost Gordon, they lost Moustakas, that was at U.S. Cellular Field. Then Wade Davis got hurt from their pen, Ho Chaver got hurt. Gordon came back not near what he was before, Moustakas out for the year. Kane got hurt two different times. Really hard to overcome that. That ball hit pretty good in the left field. And it's caught. Well, most of the time, Especially if it's the defending world champion, Kansas City Royals or Kansas, whoever, I will pick them regardless, out of respect, until somebody beats them. It's like I picked Kansas City the last three years to win this division. I picked on August 18th. I switched now and went with Cleveland. But you're right. That was before they lost Carrasco and Salazar. Yeah, that's the last two years in the National League. I picked the Cubs. I picked them last year and I picked them again this year. This year they made a shambles of the race in the central. They also are the best home team in baseball. 56 and 24 with that night game remaining tonight. Uh, they're not going anywhere for a while. No, they got some exceptional young players and a few that have yet to come up. That are really good. Todd single to lead off the fifth. Got a Lance Johnson jump and stole second. Came around to score on Sanchez single. Carlos Sanchez with both RBIs in this ball game. Watch out. Here it comes. Nope. Too much on it. Oh. <laughs> I would have had to put my hand. <laughs> nah, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> if it came in the booth, I'd had a shot. Oh, I don't believe you could just. No, you put your hand. You get, get nailed against it. No, no, no. no. Oh, that, right that, wouldn't, there. that wouldn't be good. <laughs> no. I'd, I'd be out till next spring training. <laughs> That one. 
That would remind me a few years ago, Aaron Rowan is playing training bunting all of a sudden. He put oh. his hand underneath the bat. Finger exploded. The ball hit his finger oh, exploded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. <laughs> no. Oh, it's good to have Aaron back in the organization, though. Is ball four. So you want to get his 40th and that at bat. Tied with 39 homers, 96 knocked in. And here comes Avi. Avi won for three. Had a big base hit back in the seventh. Helped set up that Frazier run. Crossing home play. Field around to the right. Gap in left center. There he goes again. With that jump. <laughs> it's going to go into third. <laughs> so he picks up his 14th stolen base and creates another error. This time. Goes E2, but this time it's Moore behind the plate, not Jimenez. And once again, if you don't watch him at first and he gets a running start, it's very difficult to stop him, and then the ball gets away. So, a big insurance run 90 feet away. Everybody in in the infield, outfield slightly to the right. High neck in. Two runs, five hits, no errors for our socks. No runs, two hits, three errors for their Indians. Turn him loose and field in. Omar Narvaez in the on deck circle. Got nothing to lose but turning him loose here. He's going to get a fastball. Well, this is the perfect spot. Full count. Got his fastball down the middle that time. Yeah. Spots like this, that our young hitters have got to learn how to lay off a 3 2 breaking ball. There's the fastball. He didn't like to call. Well, again, we've talked about Bill Miller and the zone he's calling today, and it's been consistent. Yes, it has. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's a big plate. Well, it's the biggest plate we've seen all year. But again, it's been for both sides, so it's it's moot. Omar takes ball one. As long as the same for both sides, it's okay. Two and oh.
bit of a gap out there in right center. And guy way off the line and right. Three and oh. Sanchez on deck. It's like he's going to have a chance to drive in all the runs. Just close, you better be happy. <laughs> I, would, I should say so. And there's a base hit, that a boy. It's a three nothing ball game. Well, he's he's just been really impressive. He's got two hits, plus he lined out to Chris. That was in the fifth inning, and. Omar has shown the ability to put the bat on the ball. He has done that. So the walk, one out walk, to Frazier, the stolen base. And he scores. So Mickey Callaway out to the mound. The pen, Joseph Cologne. We saw him in the extravaganza last night. All he did in his one inning of work was strike out three, and not bad for a guy that was a third baseman converted to a pitcher. Yeah, he struck out Anderson, Cabrera, and Abreu. Big fastball straight over the top. So here's been a hitting hero today. Carlos Sanchez is lined hard to right. He's lined hard to left. He's singled twice. Check once, check that once. Knocked in both runs. Short lead by Omar. Oh and two. Three six and oh for us, oh two and three for them. Plans to be with us. Tomorrow, final homestand. First of a four game set against Tampa Bay and then finish it off over the weekend. Three against Minnesota. The game tomorrow night, if you can't make it to the ballpark, will be over Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Gary just as soon not go any deeper in his bullpen if he could help it.
checks it up fouls it off so the count hangs full with two down here in the top of the ninth inning. We have not seen the big three at the back end of their bullpen. Shaw. Miller and Allen. That's the threesome they use for a winning combination at the back end. And there is ball four, so the second walk of the inning. And that's going to be it for McAllister as Rancona comes out. He has indeed to go to the pen. And so Cologne will come into this, and as he comes in, we'll step out and be back after these messages. For the tenth time, ten strikeouts in eight and two-thirds innings. However, he's walked seven. That number is not good. He inherits a couple of base runners at first and second. Two outs here in the ninth inning, already trailing by three. And for the moment, at least, it is a safe situation for David Robertson, who has been standing around out there. He's been loose for quite some time. As we talked in the break right there, very hard to walk a couple of guys in the inning with Bill Miller strikes on today. It was that McAllister was able to do it though on yeah. fastballs that were a foot above Sanchez's head and Fraser's head. So here's Leury. Get yourself knocked. He's over three. He's due. That fastball at 94. The yeah, left handers have done a pretty good job against Cologne, but with that delivery, it's been the right handers who don't pick it up quite as well. A lot of deception as it comes right over the top. Count. Watch out. Sox with a run in the fifth, one in the seventh. They're one so far here in the ninth. Good 
good rip, but underneath it, pulled off of it just at the last second. Just missed inside. Full count. Madison would like to have another opportunity to get his second hit. That'll depend on the Uri. And the pail. That's can of corn into center field. But we pick up one, we'll go to the bottom of the ninth leading, 3 zip. For David Robertson as he comes into this one with a three run lead off the 61st time going after save number 36, and this is 43rd opportunity to do that. We did see him pick up an inning last night, gave up a hit, but struck out three. He's got to deal with the heart of the order for the Indians. Ramirez. Napoli and Santana. And before this one gets away from us, I'd like to tell you it was not the greatest year for the ball club. But I've had a wonderful time broadcasting with you in the second half of the year. I just believe that this was probably our best spell together. I've enjoyed it. And I am going to invite you to come down to winter ball and we can practice in Arizona Fall League. Well, if we weren't on air, I'd tell you <laughs> what you could do with that idea. <laughs> As there's so two. Ramirez, no, I've enjoyed it too. I really have. It's 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 been a very tough season. There's no question about that. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Well, because of the great feelings come out of spring training, the fast start, and then everybody started to think, you know what, this. Could very well be the year. 
He gone. What out? And when you have expectations, if you don't have any expectations, then you know it goes, and, and that's that's just yeah, how, that's how baseball story. season goes. We had a lot of expectations, both out of spring training and then early, and unfortunately, it didn't work out. Well, I also want to congratulate Jason Benetti on breaking in and doing such a wonderful job. You guys were you guys were terrific. And uh, I got to watch quite a few of the games obviously as yes, here is Napoli who's 0 for 2. But uh, I also want to thank John Walker. John who we've been together a long time. And of course Dave Ross who's with Comcast also doing some of the GM work. They've been with me now for 20 years. Bob Vorwald from GM. But I think that probably next season, I got a feeling. I got a feeling that there's gonna be a lot of changes made this week. That's that's my that's my feeling. That's my gut feeling. I know one thing. I've known Jerry a long time, Reinsdorf, and I don't think I've ever heard him talk in the vein he's. We've had our talks the last couple of times. He wants to win, and he wants to win. I mean, bad. As he go, two down. So yeah. that yeah. is yeah. what I'm basing my gut feeling on. If that's the case, then there yeah. will be some moves to be made. And look, yeah. it's not, it's not, as we know, it's not the greatest free agent class around. There's always some good free agents available, but this is not a deep free agent no, class. It's not. So it's going to have to be. To improve the ball club, it's going to have to be deals. And they got to decide who's going to offer you what for what they want. And that's one of the reasons why really nothing was done to trade deadline. It was Zach Duke. And they were waiting for the offseason because the market is bigger. A lot of teams will be disappointed they didn't make it and might be willing to part with some guys they never would have parted with at the trade deadline. Well, you never know in this game. You never know what's going to happen in this. You don't know the feelings of the clubs, but I, I do know one of the things I think that's that's causing me to feel this way is, and knowing Jerry for over 30 years like I have, is the fact that the success the Cubs are having. They're having a lot of that, and they're going to have a lot more. Exactly right, and yeah, I don't think Jerry's going to sit back and <laughs> let that happen. In fact, I know he's not. Outfield there straight up and deep. And this ball game is over. So three strikeouts here. 14 strikeouts for Rodon and Robertson. 11 for Carlos. And we win it. 3 0. And we'll be back. <laughs>